Well, good Monday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Monday. It is the off season, and uh, well, actually, the silly season. It's always been the off season since we lost to the Green Bay Packers, and there's not really much going on but the rent. And um, this is. You know, this is hard. It's hard because we're a little over three weeks away from training camp opening, um, a little over five weeks away before I jet out to um, Los Angeles for the Dallas Cowboys um, training camp for about a week, a little over a week. Um, and I can't wait to go. I just can't wait to get out there. Um but I was sitting here thinking about something here because I was reading an article because I guess it's um, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, uh, you know, show. Of course, everything's a show. And thinking about what they used to say about Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and equating it to how the Joneses do business. Back in the early days, the cheerleaders got basically $15 per game. And then I think um, it ended up getting up to like $50 a game is what they actually made. And there was a lawsuit, I think, in 2018 that improved their pay to about $400 per game. And they get anywhere from like $15 to $20 an hour for practice. Not, not, not the game. Not the game now. We talking about practice. And I want to say... When you think about the Dallas Cowboys that are worth $9.2 billion, this is typically what you see in most businesses. The CEO makes a whole lot of money, but by the time you actually get down to the people making the sausage, they don't make that much money. Now, to, to be honest, truth be told, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders make a lot more money than other teams. Mainly because the value of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, that brand, was the original. And they are the standard bearer for cheerleading. But I want you to think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. 15 to $20 an hour. And they get $500 per game. And you have eight or nine home games a year. That... Being a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, you are only making about $70,000 a year. What is that brand worth? What does that, how much money does that bring in for the Dallas Cowboys? And here's the thing that's kind of crazy about the Cowboy cheerleaders. They're not allowed to have a social media presence either. You can't go out there and, you know, be a YouTuber and, you know, Instagram model and everything else. You can't do any of that stuff. So most of them have to have another job along with that. And you would think that being a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader would be a full-time job, wouldn't you? When you think about what they do on the field, the entertaining value of it, no. Because basically, here's the thing about being a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. Basically, they've sold them on... Because you are a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, you have visibility and you're able to, you know, turn that into something much more. That and dance opportunities out there, there's not a lot of them. So we're actually doing you a favor because you're able to come in here and do your craft and have a platform for it where you can turn it into something more later on. So when we think about Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, or any player on the field, that same mentality goes through. We've heard them literally say, they, they literally said this. Dak Prescott's got to understand that being a Dallas Cowboy gives you opportunities outside of being in Dallas. To make more money, more opportunities. That's their mentality. It's nothing personal. We're this big brand. You hitch your wagon to us. 
you can make more money later on. And, and in some regards, and this is where I actually say, if you are Dak, CD, or Micah Parsons, are you better off leaving the Dallas Cowboys? Or are you better off staying with the Dallas Cowboys more than likely not having the chance to win the Super Bowl? When you think about Jason Witten, Jason Witten had the opportunity. He was given the opportunity for Monday Night Football, bombed at it, but was given the opportunity, the visibility of being a Dallas Cowboy. I don't know if you are a tight end for another team that that per se is going to translate. Now, it is for Gronk because he's, you know, the party guy. You know, everybody wants to, and he's got several rings. But you think about Tony Romo being one of the highest paid commentators who is like Dak Prescott. Would Tony Romo have the opportunity to be that commentator the same way if he had been the quarterback of, let's say, Cleveland Browns? I don't know that he does without the hardware. And the same thing about being a wide receiver. You know, the funny thing about being the wide receiver is this is the crazy thing. All the top wide receivers, those guys aren't winning rings. You think about Tariq Hill going to Miami, it's not Justin Jefferson. You think Justin Jefferson is winning a ring this year? In Minnesota? Do you think Miami's winning rings this year? You look around the league, high-paid wide receivers aren't winning Super Bowls. So do you go elsewhere to get paid and not have the visibility? Or do you stay with Dallas where you know you're always going to be talked about, you're always going to see highlights of you, whether you are doing great or you fail, you can have a minor incident outside of football and it's going to be covered like to the nth degree. And as they say, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So the question becomes is, if you're Dak Prescott, this is a real question. Do you look at this and say, yeah, I might have an opportunity to win a ring elsewhere, but I may not be heard from anymore. For example, how much stuff do you see Matthew Stafford doing, even though he went to the Rams in one of the biggest markets there is, won a Super Bowl? Do they talk about him more than they do Dak Prescott? Pat Mahomes. One three. Do they talk about Pat Mahomes and does he have as many endorsements as Dak Prescott? I don't think so. Now, I can't say what anybody else should do. And really, you never, I was always taught that, you know, you never mess with somebody else trying to get paid. You worry about you getting paid. But we're all up in that. Everybody's all in up in that. But it's an interesting way to look at it that the Cowboys, A, are penny pinchers. And this goes back to Jerry Jones running the whole organization like a mom and pop shop. That everybody is part of the family business here. You know, Charlotte, you know, the community director and everything else and all that, taking care of all of that optics. Stephen Jones being the money guy, you know, uh, I think uh, son-in-law is like one of the team attorneys. And this, I mean, literally everybody in the family is running the business. And I'm assuming, and I remember uh, Stephen Jones' son one year was out there, you know, selling merchandise on the sidelines of training camp. So it's nothing personal about Dak. CD and Micah, it's just the way they do business. They're rich, and they didn't get there by giving all their money away. And I can't say I know anybody who's rich that's just giving all their shit away. 
All right, good people. We'll talk about this a little bit more um, tonight. We'll be live streaming at 9 o'clock Eastern. Hope you guys tune in for that. Peace out.